Hey there, Aubrey. How's it going today? I'm great, Lindsay. How are you? How's the weather in Colorado? Oh, Aubrey, <laughs> that is such a boring question. <laughs> I know, right? We're going to talk about this today, you guys. We often start episodes, I feel like, especially Jessica and I, because the weather's so different in Arizona and Oregon, we will sort of start talking about the weather. But then I'm like, ugh, this is so boring. No one wants to talk about the weather. Well, it is common, right? It's the easiest thing. It's the thing that we all share. We all experience weather in one way or the other. So it makes sense as a go-to, guys. But the more other options you have, the better. Yes, right? especially imagine you're at like a conference and you're talking with several yeah. different people. If every one of them start that conversation, that small talk, asking you about the weather, oh, that would get so redundant. <laughs> yeah, that would be really bad, especially because you're at a conference and there's a lot of other things you yes. could be talking about exactly. because you're probably not even going outside at a conference. <laughs> you're not leaving the hotel. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Let's talk about anything else. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. So, you know, in today's bonus episode, we're going to let our listeners know about an amazing special offer we have, but we want to get into the topic of social small talk at work and what are some other good topics, Aubrey, that we can go to. Exactly, right? right? We all need this almost daily. We find ourselves in situations where we need to make small talk, right? It happens at work all the time. Maybe you're yep. in the break room or at the water cooler or chatting before a meeting starts. We are all in those situations where you know you don't have time to get really deep. You need some kind of small talk just to not stay, sit there awkwardly in silence. Oh my God. And this is, you know, I don't want our listeners to ever avoid social interaction because connection is what keeps us alive. It's what makes us feel alive and human. And so, you know, we think about you guys all the time. Are you at work and are you avoiding that break room? Are you avoiding that happy hour after work because you're afraid to speak English with your native speaking colleagues? That's what this episode and this, what we're going to talk about, this course program is going to help you guys with. Right, Aubrey? Exactly, right? It's all, not all, but this is a big part of making those connections at work, those social skills, right? The yes. What happens in the less formal situations when you're creating that network, you're creating these connections where you're building your, um, you know, that network that you can then rely on in the future. This is so huge. I know relationships matter at work. Sometimes there's a lot of politics at work for not necessarily in a bad way either. Sometimes we just need to navigate relationships and, 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 and ask people for help with things. And if we haven't spent that time socializing in the easy topics, we won't have those people to rely on when we really need them. Uh -huh. Exactly, right? So we want to share, we have a very exciting opportunity coming up. We're doing yep. a business and social English bundle with our yes. business course and also our social English online course. This is going to be amazing, Lindsay. I'm excited about it. It's going to be amazing. It. It's going to be amazing. What, is the, what does the word bundle mean? I think that might be a new, oh, yeah. a new word for our listeners, just in case they're not sure. What does yes, that mean? Yes, to bundle things together means to put several things together in like a package. So often yes. we'll do do this with our courses so we can give you more more bang for your buck is a fun exactly. expression in english that means you get more for the money exactly so guys this offer is only available until february 7th so that's coming up very soon and until february 7th you're going to save a hundred dollars off the total price between the two courses plus a very special bonus and aubrey where can they go to grab that and find out more about that special bundle you guys can go to allersenglish.com slash social at work. That'll be an easy one to remember. You guys need to be social at work. So that'll be an easy <laughs> link to remember. Go check it out today. You have until February 7th. Yeah, go check it out now, guys. So Aubrey, let's get into this topic today. What is a better alternative to the weather? Something else that we can use to grab onto to connect, right? You want to think about the things that everyone is interested in. Everyone will have something to say. This is sometimes why we rely on talking about the weather. Everyone's yeah. aware of it. We're all probably going to have something to say. It feels very safe. There are other topics that are equally safe where everyone's interested. Everyone will have something to say. And the big biggest one is food. Right. Yeah. It just takes a little bit of an extra effort to go a little bit deeper than the weather 
and think about these other options. I, I mean, everyone eats, hopefully. If you- <laughs> everyone eats. So that's a given, right? And right. we're all interested yes. in food. We're trying new restaurants. We're trying yes. new recipes. It's interesting to think about everyone has sort of their opinions of whether they would rather go out to eat or cook at home. I love when someone sparks a conversation about food. I'm interesting. I'm um, immediately engaged and interested. Immediately engaged and interested. Are you, Would you call yourself a foodie? What do you think? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Not, I mean, a lot of people are more extreme than me, for sure. Yeah. I um, I have my old standbys sometimes at d- restaurants that I love. I'm not as um, willing to try new things. I often, if I'm not ah, able to go okay. somewhere very often, I'm going to order something I know that I love. And I feel like that's not a sign of a real foodie. I think foodies are are more experimental and trying new things all the time. Right. And they're always talking about it. I have a friend, my friend Julianne, who I went to graduate school with, and she lives out here in Colorado, which is amazing. She is always talking about food. It's so funny. She's kind of a connoisseur of food, especially Mm. Asian food, Japanese food, but she's always just, it always comes into the conversation. And I noticed that about her and it's amazing. I'm kind of impressed every time I hang out with her. I think, wow, your mind just goes to food and all these new trends in a way that my mind doesn't always go to, but I agree with you. This is good for everyone. Yes. Even someone who isn't, you know, as obsessed or as interested, isn't a connoisseur. Like you said, what a great word for someone who's really an expert, really interested in something. But all of us, all of us like food, like talking about food. And so these, we're going to give you phrases today that you can use to spark some small talk about food instead of the weather or what you normally would rely on. Okay, let's go ahead and just give these phrases to our listeners. Guys, write these down to make sure that you can practice them and bring them up in a conversation. What would be the first one? Yeah, so What's the first, first topic around food? Yeah, first mm-hmm. about restaurants. So for example, you can say, what type of restaurants do you like to go to? This is something everyone has their favorites, right? Ah, so whether sure. it's a certain type of food or maybe something that's super fancy and bougie or a dive, there's always, you have your bougie. preferences and it's an interesting thing to think about, to chat about. Well, it's interesting to get to know that other element of the person. What about you, Aubrey? What kind of restaurants do you like to go to? What type oh, of restaurants Indian do you like Indian is my favorite. I oh. love Indian food. <laughs> I love Indian restaurants. They're usually pretty chill and quiet. It's just a nice dining experience. And the flavors are just so oh. rich and robust. I love Indian food. What about you, Lindsay? Yeah, I think I heard someone saying the other day, I mean, it's opinion, right? But I think someone was saying that Indian food is like the best in the world. According to I that agree with that. Opinion, it was probably me that said that. <laughs> I think it was on TV. That's yeah. funny. I think it was like an a food connoisseur. But yeah, you too, Aubrey. Oh, I love it. I feel it's like so it's the too. most flavorful. I eat lots of different foods and oh, I always come back to Indian food. It's just so, it's and it's so- difficult to make at home. I've tried and it's never as good as in restaurants. So um, maybe if you grew up cooking it, obviously you're going to do a better job than me. But when I try, it's just never the same. Oh, it's amazing. I I have a soft spot for Japanese food just Mm. because I lived in Japan for a while and I think it's some of the best food in the world. It's just very clean food. And the presentation is so important in Japan around the way that food is. There's just something so special. I can't even describe it. You know? Yes, it's like art, so, right? When food is yeah. art, it takes it to a whole another level, right? It's very elevated. I love that. But it's there are other phrases sure. too. Anything you could ask about restaurants, for example, you could just say, what's the last restaurant you went to? And yeah. someone's, everyone's going to have something to say, even if it's been quite a while and they'd say, wow, man, I haven't been to a restaurant <laughs> in forever. Still interesting to talk about. And this is also really smart with your colleagues. If there's someone that you want to get to know better on a friend level, it's a great lead in to, oh, I heard there was a new restaurant opening. We should go there, Absolutely. you know, and try that together. It's a very natural lead into that. Yes, really good point, right? You want to be building that connections. You want to be making those those connections, making those invitations. And this is a great entry into that. You got it. Okay, so that is our first subtopic under food. Aubrey, what is the second subtopic under food? Yes, the second one is cooking. So for example, you could ask someone, do you prefer cooking or eating out? And this again, mm-hmm. I feel like everyone's gonna have a lot to say. 
<laughs> right, for sure. People like to share these details about their lives, right? Maybe they are the cook or their partner is the cook. I find mm -hmm. that usually one partner is the cook. Is that true in your world? Yes. Are you both cooks? For sure. Neither of us are cooks. So <laughs> I am de Fair by enough. default, I have to do it, but I don't love it either. So often okay. when possible, we prefer to go out or do something that makes meals really easy. Sometimes there are like meal prep companies we can use because oh, yeah. neither. Of them. But my eldest daughter, she's 16 now, and she is taking culinary arts classes. She oh. loves to cook. So we're passing the that's baton cool. onto her a little bit. <laughs> oh, that's very cool. I love that idea. Yeah. Okay. So do you prefer cooking or eating out? Write that one down, guys. And your second one is what's your favorite meal to prepare? Yeah. So, and this is really interesting too, to talk about, you know, whether you love cooking or not, I feel like people have their old standbys, their favorite meal mm -hmm. to prepare, whether it's because it's something very easy or very impressive, something they like to make for friends. This will be yes. interesting to find out people's answers. You'll be able to learn so much about them. Oh, it's true. For me, it's grilled cheese, but <laughs> that's what you go for the dish. really easy, easy options. <laughs> basic dish, but you could do a lot with mustard on grilled cheese. You oh, could do a lot with true. different cheeses, different mustards. It's it's pretty cool. Or my jam brother puts too. sliced apples on a grilled cheese. It's oh, like mustard, yeah, fancy so cheeses, yeah. and sliced apple. That sounds amazing. See, there you go. It doesn't have to be so basic in the end. <laughs> so that's a great one, guys. Ask people what their favorite meal is to prepare. All right, Aubrey, let's move on to number three, the third topic. What is it? Yeah, third is to talk about local favorites. So you might say, what's your favorite local restaurant? Now, this is great if you are, you know, at a conference and maybe you've been there a few days. So you've each had a chance to try somewhere local and it would be interesting yeah. to talk about. Or if someone's visiting from out of town, this is great to ask them, what's a local spot that I need to try? Yeah, because we always want to find the local stuff and we want to know what's good and what's not so good. You don't want to go, it's not cheap these days going out to eat, right? I've noticed our bill is always 20% more, it feels like. Absolutely. Uh, so you don't want to so go somewhere you don't like. You're going to spend yeah. more money. You want a good experience. Yeah, if I go out, I want to, I think we're going out to eat less these days in my house, but we're going out to better places. We're mm. just getting a lot more selective. Like we never go to chains. And we only, when we hear about a really good restaurant, we know it's going to be good. We'll go and spend the money, but otherwise we'll eat at home. Yeah. You're so. not going out just to eat. You're going out for the experience. No. So you exactly. want to know those good local places where you know you'll have a great time. And what is this this second phrase about hidden gems? Yes, I love that this one. is really great to ask someone, have you found any hidden gems around here? So this is such native vocabulary. A hidden gem yeah. is something yeah. that not everybody knows about, right? Just the locals yeah. are going to know. Maybe it's a speakeasy in town, right? Which is like a bar that most people don't know about. Or just a yep. small restaurant that isn't very famous, might not even have like a many Yelp reviews. So people right. don't know about it. Yeah. And literally a gem is a, a rock, right? That comes from the earth mm -hmm. and valuable in some cases. And I like that you mentioned that hidden gem can apply to not just restaurants. It's not just for food guys. It could be a night spot. It yes. could be a cafe. It could be like a park, a lot of things. Exactly. Right. Yes. Right. So this, the conversation could really expand from here. If you're talking about food, you're talking about restaurants, you ask someone if they know of any hidden gems, then yes. that could really make it interesting if they start talking about a museum or a really cool Ooh. old like dinner theater or something you never would even think to visit. Ah, so many in New York. It makes me miss New York a little bit, discovering these little hidden gems that you can find. Uh, oh, well. <laughs> I know, so true. We just have to find them wherever we are, right? They do we exist. Do. I found a few little speakeasies here in Gilbert, right? Oh, this fun. tiny little suburban town that really? are really cool. Yeah. Speakeasies, literally, that's pretty cool. I that's know, and they cool. are. They're really neat. And it does feel, you kind of feel like an insider, if especially hmm. if they you need a password sometimes to get into a speakeasy. And so if you get that from a friend or maybe their Facebook group or something, you feel like you're in the know, right? You, you've figured out some kind of <laughs> hidden information. It's always a good feeling. Yeah. There's no cooler feeling than entering a speakeasy. Sometimes it's like behind a vending machine and you push the vending machine. Yes. <laughs> and you walk in and there's a whole establishment down there. I know. There's right? one here where it's like an old phone booth that you go in and you lift the receiver and then the wall 
opens and oh. you go through. Like, it's just so fun. <laughs> so cool. It would be cool to do an episode of All Ears English about like vocabulary from prohibition, just going back Ooh, to yeah. that era and see what's come out of that. Who are the famous figures that we still refer to in English? What are the, what are the words, the expressions, the events? Wouldn't that be cool? Absolutely. Yes. I think we need to do that. <laughs> put that on the list. <laughs> let's put that on the list. Let's awesome. put that on the list. All right, Aubrey. So let's remind our listeners, guys, if you want more of this, because we know the biggest challenge is how can we build the relationships at work? This bundle is going to offer you our business English course, as well as our social small talk course, plus a very cool bonus. And you're only going to get this and save $100 until February 7th. One more time. What's that link, Aubrey? Go to allearsenglish.com slash social at work. Yes, guys, go there today. Don't miss out. You only have until February 7th. Yeah, exactly. After February 7th, we break apart the bundle and we we increase the prices again, guys. So this offer is only available until then. What should we leave our listeners with here, Aubrey? What should they know coming away from today's episode? Yes, everyone listening is going to have opportunities to make small talk and you want to make it interesting with native natural phrases. Avoid talking about the weather, right? Use these phrases to ask about food, cooking, local spots. That is a great way to spark a conversation. Yeah, life is so much more rich than just the weather. <laughs> There's yes. so many other options. So go to food as a good backup plan, guys. And thanks for hanging out today, Aubrey. This has been fun. Great topic. Yes, awesome. See you next time, Lindsay. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye.